It will be a tough year for farmers and pastoralists in Southern Africa and the Horn of Africa. More than 30 million people are already said to be food insecure. In Southern Africa, the worst affected countries are South Africa, with emergencies declared in five out of nine provinces, Malawi, where about 2.8 million people are said to be food insecure, Zimbabwe, around 1.5 million people are food insecure, with about 600,000 in crisis, and then there is Angola, 1.25 million people there are at risk nationwide, and Mozambique where about 800,000 people are at risk. For the north, in the, Horn of, in the Horn and East Africa, poor rains have hit parts of Ethiopia, Somalia and Djibouti. Well, let's discuss the situation in the south further. Angela Kupla joins us live from Johannesburg. Angelo, Ethiopia, which appears to be the worst hit nation here in East Africa, is already seeking international aid to cope with the drought. How are nations in the southern region coping? Well, this El Nino uh, weather pattern has severely affected this region here. And according to long-term weather forecasts from the South African Weather Bureau, it's going to be the case for at least until the end of the summer season. So we've probably got another six to eight weeks to go of this really bad weather where there's no rain or minimal rain. Some rain has fallen in the last week or two, but it's simply not enough. The situation in Zimbabwe is becoming critical. The, the country there said that their grain import requirements are set at around one and a half million tons but local analysts are suggesting that they probably underestimated their requirement there Botswana has a severe water shortage so there's nothing being planted in that country the Suta of course has water but they also don't have much grain that they can uh, harvest and grow Namibia doesn't have any commercial grain crop to speak of but they do have access to the ocean so they can directly import so even if rains do come now the harvesting for this particular uh, season is effectively at an end. So there's going to be lots of importing that's going to be happening. Panina? And South Africa, Angelo, is the most economically stable of the affected countries in that region. Is it in a position to offer assistance to its neighbors? And how is it coping with its own challenges? Well, everyone's eyes are on South Africa because of that uh, perceived uh, stability. It's an exporter of grains generally when it has stock in its silos, but those stocks have been depleted. South Africa has to import around uh, seven, no, about 5.6 million tons of maize just to meet its internal requirements. That's over and above what countries around it, like Mozambique, Lesotho, Botswana, Zimbabwe, um, and Angola might need. So they're going to be struggling. Of course, you know that those countries are all landlocked, Zimbabwe, Botswana, and Lesotho. So they have to rely on South Africa's ports for access to grain that has to be imported from other countries around the world. This means that there's going to be additional stress placed on the South African infrastructure. We are hearing though that Transnet Rail has made some rail cars available because of the slump in the mining sector. And that's going to create capacity, but the grain still needs to be moved from those ports in South Africa onto the borders so that they can be moved to silos in the neighboring countries. And that's going to be an issue. And of course, underlying all of this is the region's uh, weak currencies against the U.S. dollar, which are going to push the prices of imports up significantly. Panina? All right. Angela Kupla there in Johannesburg. Thank you for joining us.